It's not easy being green. I have a huge H&M haul for you guys. I placed a massive online order. I just love H&M. Sixty-five percent of H&M's materials are now from recycled or more sustainable sources. Don't count on it. Oh! H&M have set a new materials goal that hopes to use thirty percent recycled material by 2025. You sit on a throne of lies. They will also continue to develop and scale their circular business models. I don't believe you. Smell ice, can ya? Bleeding Christ. Sadly, we have to debunk more greenwashing <clears throat> again. I feel like this will be a repeating cycle. If only they repeated their outfits. No, but really we're actually approaching like even more of like a brave new world kind of dystopia here and it's very worrying to me. And hey, you know what? I like marketing. I appreciate the manipulation tactics. I'm a Scorpio after all. Sympathy for the devil and all of that. I do love the show Mad Men as well. But this? Ew, gross. If you don't recall, I actually brought this up in my Jane Fonda video. I've written a lot about it then, but I scrapped it because that video got too long. Go watch that. But anyway, we're making this entire video about this now. So what the hell are they doing? So H&M, in case you're uninformed on this, are one of the biggest fashion brands in the world. They're the second biggest retailer, actually. Fun fact for you. And you know what? Despite all of the strife that everyone is actually dealing with right now, they've actually been doing really well in their sales. They've made even more money by cutting back on discounts and selling items at full price, which is so fun for everyone that's struggling. H&M have been reporting that they're super sustainable, but that's landed them in some very hot legal water. A lawsuit was filed against them in July 2022. In case you're watching this in the future, um, can you tell me that things get better? Please, please don't confirm my suspicions. The lawsuit accuses them of greenwashing and false advertising, something I would love to be judge and jury on and be paid to do that full time, so don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure that my dream can actually come true. The lawsuit was brought forward by Chelsea Commodore, a marketing student who said that she had overpaid for a fashion piece marketed as conscious that in fact wasn't, and some of the items labelled as conscious actually used more water to manufacture than their regular evil counterparts. An investigation by Quartz actually pulled up a bunch of issues which they actually kindly shared directly with H&M themselves, trying to actually, you know, help them be better. So what did Quartz find? Well, H&M are actually producing their own scorecards of sustainability because nobody can grade your own tests better than yourself, right? Nothing bad could happen there. Absolutely. But, twist. The scorecards were actually made based on the information from Sustainable Apparel Coalition, SAC, as we'll be referring to them from now on, which uses the measurement of the Higg Material Sustainability Index, MSI, which we'll be calling that from now on. And the thing is that I have praised this in the past. Yes, even I could be wrong on things. This is why we're all human and we can all learn, change and grow. My pedestals are not a good thing. The Norwegian Consumer Authority actually laid a complaint against SAC, so H&M removed their scorecards. SAC themselves are quote unquote put on pause and are reassessing their methods. But that doesn't mean that the Hig index isn't still being used as a measure. To quote directly from Just Style, the Norwegian Consumer Agency has concluded that a tool from the SAC is not sufficient as a basis for the environmental claims they have used in marketing. What it boils down to is that the measures that they actually do, it measures the environmental impact in different types of textiles until the fabric itself is finished, i.e. not the entire environmental impact of a finished garment that you buy in store. This quote unquote measurement is based on average figures for the environmental impact of the various types of textiles that have been sourced from different regions around the world. Dear oh dear, that's not looking very good now, is it? In the Quartz investigation, they actually had a look at 630 garments that were actually on sale on the website, which is mind-boggling a number. Um, that's huge in itself, which is a another part of the issue, they assessed that against the claims that were made. So out of that 630 garments, 326 had no improvement whatsoever, 136 pretended that they were actually better for the environment than they were, and the remaining 168 were accurate. That's a pretty high rate of inaccuracy and misleading marketing, isn't it? This is of course despite all of the green marketing that is done by H&M, um, and you have this wonderful image of like this woman reaching up and touching a cloud and holding it in her hand. Silly thing, don't you realise that the only way you can do that is if you're flying on a magic carpet? Who are the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, you may well ask? Well, the plot thickens, my dear. 
Because you know what? It was founded in 2009 by Walmart in Patagonia. Walmart is actually owned by the Walton family, which is actually the richest family in America. Sorry, Kim K. Just better work harder, I don't know. And we all kind of know about Walmart's uh, not good practices that they have in place with their employees and also <laughs> where they get their products from. Patagonia is actually owned by the outdoor enthusiast, now billionaire, Yvonne Chouinard. I watched that video of how to pronounce that name so many times, I'm sorry if I got it wrong. But I have slightly more faith in Patagonia because they've actually backed a lot of things up. But I will say you can't become a billionaire without exploitation, so there's that. So SAC was actually founded by these companies and their members include brands and manufacturers and governments and also some academic institutions and the like. You had incredibly sustainable companies under their belt such as ASOS and Amazon and Boohoo, Disney, Kmart, Nike, oh and Target, just to name a few. Very sustainable companies, right? None of them have ever done anything bad. Sarcasm is heavily implied here. And of course, these companies would want to be held to the highest standard by their own coalition, right? They'd really want all of the warts to be shown, right? This is like having built-in Facetune, honestly, and I'm glad that there are watchdogs that are calling this BS out because we really need it because consumers get lied to all the time and it's very frustrating. Now, I'm also not denying that I'm sure that there are people that work at these companies that actually want to try and do the right thing and do better and make positive changes, but the problem is that capitalism actually relies on a system that has year-on-year -year growth, not only in terms of like what they're producing, but the money that they're making. And despite what people may want to think, making the most money out of the lowest cost doesn't actually always mean the most environmentally friendly option, because it normally leads to exploitation as being your little loophole there to make the most money, as has been proven time and again. And a lot of the time, companies really like to hammer home. It's like, we've made fantastic reductions in our waste and all this other stuff. Whereas, like I talked about in my e.l.f. cosmetics video, when they're actually reducing their packaging um, to switch up to cardboard and stuff, that just means that they're saving themselves money. It was done as a money-saving opportunity first, not an environmental <laughs> opportunity. Um, the environment is very much secondary because businesses aren't really measured on that. I personally think that they should be measured on that, um, but that's a separate topic. <laughs> so now H&M are trying to do damage control, and this is where we get the ads for the active wear, like I talked about in the Jane Fonda video. And of course, you can trust Jane Fonda because she's an activist, she's an environmentalist, she created the Fire Drill Fridays, she is very smart and really with it when it comes to trying to save the future. She brings up the climate crisis all the time and the importance of that. Oh, sweetie. I still am confused as to why she actually took this campaign. It's like H&M, sweetie, we know that you're lying, okay? It's like dealing with a dog that's trying to hide something in its mouth. It's like, we know you're doing something wrong. <laughs> you know it too. <laughs> but H&M are really trying to convince people that they care. Green bucks make bank because consumers want to make positive changes. They want to be doing the right thing. And there is this real, like, kind of urgent need, I definitely deal with this all the time, to actually save the future and have somewhere that you can actually live in the future that won't be boiling you alive. Now H&M have pledged that they're going to be using 100% recycled or sustainable materials by 2030. But let's just have a look at their track record quickly because they also said that they'd be paying their employees a living wage by 2018 and that hasn't even come close to happening and we're in 2022 right now. Now, when you actually hover over the sustainability tab on their website, because I, I, I don't shop on regular websites, it's just not how I do. Um, so I had a look at it and I was like, whoa, you are completely bombarded on their sustainability site with all of the things they're doing. It's like, how dare you doubt us, bestie? I thought that you knew that we really care about the environment. That's why we've got all of this information. Therefore, by having all of these links that you're definitely not going to click on and go down these rabbit holes where we basically have like nothing to really hold us accountable and um, by just seeing this this will mean that you'll feel confident in shopping with us so please just continue to give us your money and let us keep this cycle going <laughs> not a circular economy just a cycle of waste but maybe i'm being too hard because h and are at least trying right you may be wanting to retort with their in-store recycling program where you get an h and voucher to buy new clothes as you try and recycle your old ones Hmm. Okay, let's just debunk this too. So H&M produces three 
billion, that's with a B, items of clothing a year, a figure that they actually want to double by 2030, and they want to have 100% of their garments recycled by 2030. The math isn't mathing when you consider they're mostly dealing with mixed materials and synthetics. And guess what? Transparency in this area is really hard to find, other than what they want to do in their future. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> The clothes which are currently donated get shipped off to huge sorting centres via ICO, but the transparency on ICO's website, the company H&M and many others actually use, is just corporate feel-good stuff, honestly. I actually couldn't find out what happens to the clothes that get resold or exactly where the resale clothes go. I'm sure that there's a huge business venture they get from this, though. When the clothes arrive, they get sorted into piles by people. They get sorted into rewear, which are items marketed as second-hand clothing, reuse, which is items not able to be reworn but get changed into something else like rags, or recycle where clothes go through a literal shredder, but the fibres are actually not only mixed but also damaged by this process so it makes them too short to be made into anything useful like you might think of clothes. It goes into things like insulation or carpeting, not a dress like people may be thinking. H&M is very excited about the technology growth in this area though, with the work that they're doing with machines to turn old useless garments into new ones, but again, the fibres get incredibly damaged by this process. Process. So even if this is possible, it'll only be a percentage of recycled fibres used in a whole new fabric. But they'll be marketing it as being recycled, of course. I really hate this because this is just greenwashing, they're trying to create a solution to a problem that they made instead of addressing the actual problem. <laughs> Now, not every brand is as brazen as Shein about the fact that they're burning the forest down with animals in it in one hand and handing you flimsy garments that fall apart after three washes in the other. No, and H&M are not the only brand that have been doing greenwashing and being called out for it. This is one of the few with uh, real lawsuits at play as opposed to just consumer pressure though. Um, this is actually quite shocking, the fact that this is actually getting taken to court. Talking about Shein's popularity though, because that business is absolutely booming, the popularity of customers was a moot point for brand trust member Ken Morris, who was a managing partner at Cambridge Retail Advisors. To quote this from Forbes, shoppers have every right to lie to themselves, fast fashion retailers shouldn't have the right to lie to everyone else. When corporations lie, they will eventually lose their respect, loyalty, and business. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> to me, this is a very hopeful take. <laughs> My concern is just the fact that companies get away with this all the time repeatedly, and they're doing it in sneakier ways and more manipulative ways, and guilting consumers as opposed to sorting their own stuff out because this whole focus on the individual making changes is, uh, it's just this whole shifting the blame of the carbon footprint rubbish. And the thing is, I'm also not encouraging you to just go wasting stuff and traveling everywhere. Hell no, we should, everyone needs to reduce, everybody does. My real issue here with the companies is the fact that they can mostly pay their way out of like any situation to do with like any brand damage. And I think that this lawsuit will even suffer from the same fate in all honesty. They'll just be like, ah, we'll pay some stuff and then we'll spin it into like a really good PR opportunity to say, Oh, we were wrong, we've made all of these great changes, now look at us, look at our conscious collection. You can get all of this stuff that's totally not made by forced labour at all. Um, but also, okay, on that, when it actually comes to the transparency of H&M, they're a lot better than other companies, and they're doing this badly. Like, that's how screwed up the fast fashion industry really is, and how bad it really is. We can't capitalism our way out of the climate crisis, and we really need to stop like praising these companies that are bullshitting us with like these marketing tactics, honestly. Like, they should not be held up on a pedestal. We need to be questioning them at all times. It's things like this that made me wish that we had live fact-checking like they do in debates. Conclusion, and who can you trust? Now obviously I just want more people to be aware of the greenwashing that's happening. If there has been an update between filming this and the outcome of the lawsuit then I will let you know and I'll make a community post about it if I haven't like heard about it by the time this goes live. But honestly I'm doubting that we'll hear anything about it because this will just get settled out of court and um, you'll just see more greenwashing adverts come out of H&M and then the cycle continues. Which is why I'm always erring on the side of like trust no one but that's not a very hopeful take. But there are places that are trying to hold businesses accountable and make sure that there is actual transparency for you as a consumer especially if like you're trying to make some of your very few purchases not only because our purchasing power has gone down but then also because we're dealing with a climate crisis that uh, you're trying to consume less in which case I thank you that is fantastic but these places most importantly don't have the huge conflicts of interest of what SAC actually do and SAC is called out a lot by environmental groups so some of the websites that I really like that I'll have obviously listed for you down 
down below above all of the sources links so then you've got your here's where you go for the positive stuff <laughs> and then here's all of the sources below it that's how I'll have it set up so some of the places that I really like the work of are like collective fashion justice who I talked about in my animal fabrics video fashion revolution especially with their fashion transparency index good on you is also quite helpful in particular if you're over in America I know that a lot of my audience are and all things considered another fantastic resource if you have any others please do comment them down below i will add them to a pinned comment so then people know where to go and i'll also add it in the description box ultimately things really do come down to the same thing on an individual level all the time such as buying less using what you have more repairing what you own actually taking care of the items that you have and what other people have too not just like destroying stuff especially if a friend lends it to you <laughs> No, I'm not saying that because people have broken things that I really treasure in the past. Things aren't meant to be wasted, they're meant to be savoured and thoroughly enjoyed. And um, then I just see this has just popped up from Fenty where they've got this lip gloss that could be lip gloss or it could be ketchup. But there's like six packets of this and it's why is this where we are with late stage capitalism? Is this what people mean when they say that capitalism breeds ingenuity? Because uh, stop, just make it stop. <laughs> Okay, no one needs this. If you see videos of people doing this, like don't promote them, don't encourage it because we need to stop encouraging people from like these gimmicky things. We really need to stop all of these gimmicky things because it's only pushing consumerism further, which is just destroying our planet faster. Okay, we need, no, let's, no. When you actually consider the water wars which are currently happening, which are only going to get more and more and spread around the world more, um, when you consider the fact that just a basic white t-shirt uses 2,700 litres of water to make and that is enough to like keep a person's thirst quenched for about 900 days, yeah we really need to stop thinking that fast fashion is like a good thing and this conscious stuff that H&M are doing is a great thing. It's just if you made it all the way to the end instead of an emoji please tell me your favorite or funniest greenwashing ad that you've seen because i'd love to watch it honestly maybe i'll make a shorts out of it <laughs> youtube would love that wouldn't they or actually tell me about your favorite item of clothing that you have um for me in the same way that my favorite color changes every day i don't have one specific favorite item but i love everything that i own if that makes sense um which is sounds like a cop-out answer but that's just me with my brain <laughs> But anyway, lovers, I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope that you learned something. I also hope that H&M gets held accountable, but I don't have much hope for it. But at least now you know about it and about the shadiness that is actually going on. We're going to see more of it. If there's other things that happen like this, I will be doing other videos on it because I, I want more people to know about this. And basically just show... It's not what it seems. Because it mostly just comes down to them wanting money, okay? And they know that your lovely, kind conscience is going to be leading you to their doors, which is why, again, they are the second biggest retailer. Anyway, thank you again so much for watching. My next video will be all about Grace and Frankie, um, so I look forward to seeing you then. I may have to put a delay in it because I'm watching the series again, and I don't know if you know this, but it's got seven seasons, so that's a lot to get through. Um, and obviously my analysis that I need to do of it. So anyway, take care of yourselves, enjoy some sunshine, wear your sun cream, keep wearing your mask because <laughs> we're still in a pandemic, and um, see you next time. Bye!